What does it mean to be smart about some things? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States, and I thought of this acronym uh, lately, smart about some things, S-A-S-S. -S. And what I mean by that? Well, you know, we meet with a lot of really smart people, a lot of uh, individuals who have um, achieved great things in their lives. They might be doctors or have very high positions. Um, we've been hired by lawyers before. We've been hired by all different kinds of people. We've been hired by people without a lot of um, education or job experience. But there's a problem that we see from time to time when we take over cases or when we receive denials or hear about delays. And that is when really, really smart people think they can do the immigration process themselves. And I think the reason for this is because they're smart about some things. Now, I know that I'm smart about some things, but I'm not smart about a lot of other things. Whenever my kids ask me for help with math or if they're talking to me about calculus or science, you know, that stuff goes right over my head. I was a history major and that's why I became a lawyer was because I felt drawn to the law and I learned a lot about the law and I learned about immigration and I learned about litigation. And so those are some things that I know about. But I would never try to do open heart surgery on somebody. I would never try to fly an airplane. Um, and that's why I think it's really important to recognize what you are smart about and what you're not smart about. So let me tell you a story. One time there was a doctor named Nabil and Nabil had a mom who lived back in Jordan. And Nabil filed an I-130 petition for his mom to come and live in the United States and to get a green card. And um, Nabil's case got processed through USAS, it got approved, and Nabil's um, mother-in-law came to visit, his mother, his mother came to visit. And while she was in the United States, he figured out that he could just try to um, keep her here for a while. And so he kept filing these extensions of her visa. Well, that got denied and he just thought that, well, I could um, bring her back to Jordan with me when she gets her interview at the embassy on her I-130. So she stayed in the United States for about eight months past her visa date without an extension and he kept postponing the interview back in Jordan because he was a busy doctor. Well, one day they got the notice of a date that actually worked for him. So he left with his mother. His mother had overstayed her visa by eight months and they showed up to the embassy and they had the interview. And the consular official said, oh, everything looks good. This case is certainly approvable, but there's a problem. And Nabil looked at his mom like this and said, uh oh, and what's the problem? And it turns out that because his mom had stayed in the United States for eight months, that means that she had a three-year bar on coming back to the United States. So now they'd waited all this time, they'd spent all this money, and she wasn't gonna be able to come back to the United States for three months. Now this, Nabil is a surgeon, and he's obviously a very smart fellow. He's, he's done great in his life, and, he's, and he knows a lot of things. But he's not smart about immigration. And so I think it's really important to recognize we all have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses. We all have things that we know. We all have things that we don't know. I don't know how to fix a car. I don't know how to do math. But I do know how to do immigration. So if Nabil had simply talked to a lawyer, and this guy makes hundreds of thousands of dollars, so he had plenty of money to do it. And I think that can be a curse when you're too clever or too smart because as my good friends from Spinal Tap say, there's a thin line between clever and stupid, and you don't want to be too smart. And so it might make sense for you to consider, to at least consider, talking to an experienced immigration lawyer if you're going to try to do something. And I don't say any of this in relation to Trump. This was true eight years ago, and in fact, that story I just told you about Nabil happened about six years ago, so it has nothing to do with Trump. Just generally, whenever you're going through life doing something in America, it really pays to go to an expert. And I really think that expertise is something that's obtained over a period of time, doing cases over and over, learning lessons each time, learning from the mistakes that you make so that you can prevent others from doing that. And so I really think it's important to accept that there are some things that we're smart about and there's a lot of things we're not smart about. So if you ever need help, if this video makes sense to you, if you think you're gonna need help and you are leaning on the fence to try to uh, not um, hire an attorney and do it on your own, I think you might rethink that in light of this video and in light of the lessons learned by Nabil and many other people that we've talked to. Thanks a lot, thanks for watching. We hope you found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to share it on social media, let your friends know about our YouTube channel. We're getting close to about 10,000 subscribers, so we're gonna to try to boost that here. Uh, and we're really excited about that. Make sure to share us on social media and join us in our Facebook group, which is uh, Immigrant Home on Facebook. And you can always give us a call at 314-961-8200 or email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.